For this video, I present question C. If you react four moles of H2 with 12 moles of O2, according to this equation, which reagent runs out first? And how many moles of H2O do you theoretically make? This one's a little bit more complicated than the others that we've been doing uh, dealing with this bounce chemical equation. Nevertheless, I want to show you how to do it using the acronym, it's not really much of an acronym that I made up, called BICPA. Because even with relatively simple equations like this, if you learn how to do BICPA well, you can use it to navigate any chemical reaction, no matter how complicated, and you'll get it right 100% of the time, okay? So letter B in BICPA stands for balance the chemical equation. Using principles we discussed in an earlier video, linked to in the description below, Conveniently, this one is already balanced, so we are done with the letter B. Letter C stands for convert to moles. Convert to moles, convert to moles, convert to moles. We always want to make sure that we do that. Um, so if you're given these in vo volumes or grams or pounds of amount or something like that, you have to convert everything to moles. Conveniently, this question gives it to us in moles, so we're done with part C, so we don't need to worry about that. Letter P stands for pick a reactant, and it doesn't matter which one of these you pick. You can pick it, and then we'll move on from there. For the sake of fun, let's pretend, that I, I guess we'll go ahead and pick H2, but the principles that I'm gonna apply hereafter, you could totally do exactly the same if you'd picked O2, okay? So I'm gonna pick H2, okay? So we're given four moles of H2, and the question asks us, which of these uh, reactants runs out first? And then asks us later how many moles of H2 we produce, theoretically, okay? Now, which of these two run out first? That is the limiting reactant. And this is the whole purpose of BICPA. BICPA is used to identify the limiting reactant. It does not answer how many moles of product you get. The reason we go through BICPA in order to identify the limiting reactant is because everything is calculated from the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is key. Everything, everything, everything comes from the limiting reactant, the one that runs out first, hence BICPA. Now that we've gone through the first three steps of BICPA, we have to go to step A, which is a little bit more complicated. Step A stands for answer the following question. If I have four moles of H2, how many moles of O2 do I need? Okay, we'll do this using principles of dimensional analysis slash unit conversion, discussed in an earlier video linked to in the description below. Units here in, uh, in the denominator are gonna be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term. In other words, if I've got moles of H2 here in the numerator, they're gonna be moles of H2 in the denominator right there. Now I want to ask or answer the question, how many moles of O2 do I need? Can I put moles of O2 in the numerator here? In other words, can moles of one thing and moles of another thing touch? <clears throat> the answer is yes, as gross as it sounds. I always like to imagine a mole on my skin touching a mole somewhere else on my skin, they can touch. Grams of one thing, grams of another can never touch. Grams of one thing and moles of the same thing can touch, and when I say can touch, I'm talking about can be inserted into the same set of parentheses, okay? Moles and moles can always touch. <clears throat> Okay, we have to go through moles as an intermediary between grams of one thing and grams of another. So moles and moles can always touch. <laughs> okay, great. So I've got moles of H2 and moles of O2. So this is going to help answer this question. What numbers do I insert in here? Well, the numbers I insert in here are the coefficients for these respective things in the balanced chemical equation. So what coefficient is next to the H2? Yeah, it's 2. What coefficient is next to the O2? Well, there's nothing written, which means it's an implied 1. So beautifully, the coefficients in a balanced equation tells me the ratios, the mole ratios, of one thing to another across the entire equation. Isn't that great? Okay, so what that means is that if I had four moles of H2 and I ran this reaction, I would need, four divided by two, two moles of O2, okay? So that is the answer to my first A in BICPA. Now my second A is, do I have in this scenario at least two moles of O2? How many moles did it tell me I had? I got 12. The answer is yes, I do have two uh, moles. I have more than two moles, which means that the H2 runs out first, okay? The H2 is the limiting reactant. That's the whole purpose of BICPA. In other words, I guess if I had four moles of H2, I would need, because it's a two to one ratio, I would need half that of O2. I would only need two moles of, of O2, right? In order to react with four moles of H2. But I've got way more O2 than I need. So again, the H2 runs out first, it's the limiting reactant. So that is the answer to the first half of this question. Which of these runs out first? It's the H2. Everything else, this answer in particular, is answered from the limiting reactant. So let's clear the board and we'll answer that question. We now know that our four moles of H2 in this scenario is our limiting reactant, the one that runs out first, which means that is the thing that determines how many moles of H2O product we get out the other side. And that's the next question, right? So how do I determine what that number or answer is? So I'm gonna write down again, four moles of H2, and then I'm gonna write down a set of parentheses. Units in the denominator are the same as units in the numerator of the previous term, moles of H2. Now I want to go to moles of H2O to answer the question. Can moles of H2 touch moles of H2O? In other words, can I put moles of one thing and moles of the other in the same set of parentheses? The answer is absolutely yes, because moles and moles can touch. 
solve the uh, down moles of H2O in the numerator right here. What numbers go in here? Of course, they're the coefficients. 2 next to the H2 and 2 next to the H2O, right? Now I just do the math. Moles cancel each other out. The 2s actually mathematically cancel each other out. So if I throw in 4 moles of my limiting reactive H2 into this scenario, how many moles of H2O do I get out? Yeah, the answer is 4.